Hey friends and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Morgan and today we are in our kitchen again here in Wyoming. So today I am super excited because Sam and I try to eat primarily the food that we hunt and grow. And so we get really busy around this time of the year. So I am going to make us some freezer meals. I tend to do this like once or twice a year we don't eat them super often, but it's really, really nice when we just need kind of a quick meal or I get busy at work or I don't want to think about cooking, um, especially during the holidays. I feel like you do so much cooking that when you have a little bit of time off or right after the holidays, the last thing I want to do is cook. So we are going to use a lot of our own ingredients today and start cooking some meals that we will get in the freezer. I want to show you how I prepare these types of meals for just two of us. So it is just Sam and I, there's only two of us. So a lot of these will be smaller quantities. Um, but if you have a bigger family, all you have to do is just split them less times or um, you can double or triple the recipe. It's super simple. We are using elk and antelope and all of the recipes today, primarily because that's what we have. We also have some venison in the freezer, but um, the older things that we need to get used up are the elk and the antelope. So today we're going to make lasagna, enchiladas, meatloafs, meatballs, and then um, I can kind of decide what I want to do with them that day. We could do sweet or sour meatballs. We could do Italian meatballs. We could do um, like grape jelly meatballs. We can be super flexible. So I just make the meatballs and then I can put whatever sauces on them we want. And then also sloppy joes. So we're going to be making buns. We're going to just be doing all of the things. So first thing I need to do is cut up a ton of onions. So those onions go literally in everything. Without further ado, let's get to chopping. Does anyone else's cats do this? She's crazy. Okay, so before I cut the onions, I'm actually going to get started on our brioche bread. Um, we're making rolls for the sloppy joes. So I just put it in the bread machine and let it do all of the mixing for us. I do have a detailed recipe on this. If you're interested in how to make it, I will link it above and down in the description box. So you're not missing out there. But it's literally like the world's easiest recipe. Hardest part about it is getting all the ingredients out. All right, so now I have all the wet ingredients in. So now I'm gonna add the dry, some salt. Then let's add in our yeast. And I just keep my yeast in the freezer and I have had this yeast for forever. Let's see if it has a date on it. That's by October 3rd, 2022 and yeast lasts a really long time. So I have had this for quite some time and I have no issues with it when I keep it in the freezer. Okay. We have yeast, salt. Now we're gonna add sugar, two and a half tablespoons. And then we're just gonna do four cups of flour. All right, now all I do is I just open up the bread machine, plop this in there, select, I do pizza dough start and that is going to knead the dough for us, get it all mixed up and then it will help rise. Okay, this is why I absolutely love doing the dough in the bread machine because now all I have to do, it's perfectly kneaded. It looks so beautiful. All we have to do is just take out the hook, put the bread Oh, I should have floured my hands. That's okay. Put the bread back in here, and then I'm gonna stick this in the oven with the oven light on for a couple of hours just to let it rise. We'll have it rise, then we will mix it again, have it rise again, and then we'll be ready to go. All right, now while the bread is rising, we're gonna get going on the onions. Every single recipe we're making requires onions. Let me get a scrap bowl. Or I guess the word requires is a loose term, but I think is better with onions. So we're gonna get these all diced up. I do have a good amount of onions already diced up in the freezer, but I have the time today, so I think it's easier for me to just save those onions for um, nights that we're in a hurry. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use fresh onions today. 
Obviously onions are 100% optional and that's the beauty of cooking your own food is if you don't like something, you just leave it out. So I love that about cooking. You can make things exactly to your taste. So all we're gonna do for these onions is just dice them relatively fine. I do feel like everyone cuts onions differently. I've tried other methods. This is the method that I'm most successful at. So this is the one I've stuck with. I have tried just about every other method. This is what I like. And then I'm just going to put these into this bowl and then we'll divvy them up per recipe. Once these are all cut, I am doing six onions in total. And I do find that it's a so much easier with meal prep and what I really like about it is like I'm cutting onions I might as well cut a lot of onions and then if I don't end up needing them I can save them for later in the week or for I can I mean worst case scenario freeze them and we can always use them for a dis different recipe so I just like getting the kitchen messy one time and then getting a lot of different meals out of it so if you've never tried meal prep or even freezer meals highly recommend it it just makes life so much easier. All right, I'm gonna get these all chopped up and then we will get going on the next steps. Okay, onions are fully chopped. I did cut these pretty small, um, just because we're doing meatballs and meatloaf. With some of these onions, I would rather have them small um, just to make sure that they all fit in there. So now that these are chopped, we can move on to getting some of the recipes assembled. All right, next we're going to turn on the heat and get our onions started. So for the lasagna, enchiladas, and sloppy joes, I want the onions to be a little bit caramelized. So I just have my heat set to medium. I'm going to throw in some butter and then we're just gonna let that melt down. All right, butter is all melted. You can see it's hot in there. So I'm gonna add in some, a lot of the onions. This is gonna be three of the recipes. So we only need onions for meatballs and meatloaf. And caramelizing onions always makes them shrink down a little bit. And then we'll give that a stir. I'm also gonna add, I'm, I'm also going to add some salt. Adding the salt helps draw the moisture out, which helps get them a much nicer caramelization. Give that a stir. And I'm gonna actually add just a little bit of olive oil in there as well. Perfect. Give that another stir, and then we're just gonna let these cook down uncovered on medium-low heat for, these are pretty small, so I'd say it should only take like 20 to 30 minutes, but caramelizing onion is a labor of love. It's a slow process, so while that gets going, let's start making the lasagna. Okay, so making the filling for a lasagna, and we're gonna make a couple lasagnas, couldn't be easier. I think every time someone thinks of lasagna, they think it's like this hard, boy, this is hard to open. They think it's this crazy complex process and it takes forever and it's hard. At least that's how I grew up, was thinking that lasagna was like the hardest thing to make, but it's actually super simple. So all we need to do here is just dump in these are 15 ounces, two of these of ricotta. If you want it to be a little bit more low fat, you could do um, one ricotta cheese and one uh, cottage cheese. I just don't love the texture that the cottage cheese puts in there, so I do two ricotta cheeses instead. And I do save these containers because they are great for leftovers or if I need to uh, make something for the animals, so definitely save these containers. Okay, and then in here, so simple, we're gonna add some pepper. I'm gonna throw in some parsley. This is homegrown parsley from last year's garden. So as much as you want, probably like two tablespoons or so. We'll start with that, and then one egg. And then we're just gonna mix this. If you want, you can add salt, but ricotta is naturally a pretty salty cheese, so I'm not going to add any more salt. Okay, so that's how it's looking. I'm just based off of how it looks, gonna add some more pepper. You're gonna wanna shred about a half a cup or so of mozzarella cheese into it. 
if you have pre-shredded cheese, this process will go a lot faster. I don't love, I don't love pre-shredded cheese. I think the non-caking agent that they put on it just makes it kind of have like a different texture and not melt so as well. So I generally shred my own cheese. I find it's also a little bit more cost-effective, at least at my grocery store. So you can do as much or as little. Remember, we are going to add more cheese into the lasagna so you don't need to go crazy here this just helps make that layer a little bit ooey gooey and melty all right i'm gonna call that good that is everything we need for the ricotta cheese filling now let's go ahead and just shred up a lot of this mozzarella cheese we're gonna need it for the lasagna so i'd rather just shred it now so we're all ready to go one important ingredient i almost just left out is garlic powder totally optional but I love garlic. I do have a food processor that would probably make this about a million times easier, but honestly, I don't feel like getting it out or doing the dishes from it. So we're just gonna do this the old fashioned way. Another thing that's cool is if you buy a big block of cheese like this, as long as you don't touch the cheese, so you just hold the cheese by the wrapper, is if you're not gonna use it all, um, so as long as, like, let's say I'm just trying to shred just like a little bit, as long as you hold on to the wrapper and not the cheese, you can put this back in a bag and the cheese will last for a surprisingly long time. Um, I've probably had this cheese in the refrigerator for a couple weeks, already opened, pre slightly shredded. Some of it was used on pizzas and we have no issues with molding. So just make sure that if you're going to only use just a little bit of your cheese block, don't touch it with your fingers because that can introduce new bacteria and that cheese will stay good for so long. And then when I get down to little pieces like this, Arrow gets rewarded for being a good boy and laying on his bed. Got some cheese. Yum. All right, I'm gonna go wash my hands and then finish shredding. All right, I just pulled this out. It's just been rising. So I'm just going to lightly oil my hands just so that the bread doesn't stick. And then we're going to break this down. If you're in a rush, you can stop here. You don't need to let it rise again. But look how great that looks. It's beautiful dough. I'm going to work it around a little bit, put it back into a ball like so you can see some like air bubbles starting to form in there that's exactly what we want so i'm going to put this back in the oven with that light on that's the only heat we have going on in the oven just because our house is pretty cold since it's winter and we're gonna let this rise one more time okay i just came over to look at the onions look at isn't it crazy how much they reduce when you caramelize them it always blows me away so I'm going to take majority of these out. Remember we need them, and I'm going to turn off the heat. We need them for the meatballs, enchiladas, and the lasagna. So I'm going to take a good amount of them out. And I like, we need these for the lasagna, enchiladas, and sloppy joes. So then all of the brown bits down at the bottom, that's the part that makes the flavor really good. So I'm going to take two just jars of sauce that we've canned in the past and just mix these in. This was canned in 2020, so I don't have a video on it, but hopefully next year we'll get enough tomatoes to be able to make more marinara. And then I'm just gonna use that to scrape off those brown bits just because there's so much good flavor in there. Yep, brown bits are already off. And now we just have a little bit more onion incorporated into it, which is perfect. It's exactly what we wanted. And then I'm just going to push this off to the side and we are going to start getting all of our elk and antelope browned up. Pan is clean. I'm going to put a generous amount of oil on the bottom of this. Remember, game meat is very lean, so kind of what you have to do. And then I'm going to turn the heat on to medium. All right, and then I need cooked meat for sloppy joes, the enchiladas, and the lasagna so we're gonna cook enough 
be neat to be able to get those all made up. And each one of these packages is like between one and a half and two-ish pounds, so it's a good amount of meat here. And then we're just going to kind of break these up, get them all spread around. I don't have one of those meat mashers, but I've seen them. If any of you use them, do you find that they are... I mean, they're not a huge investment. If anything, they're more of an investment in storage room, so that if any of you use them and find that they're worth it, let me know. I'm interested. And then to this, I'm just going to add a little bit of salt. Perfect. And then we're just going to get this meat all browned up. All right. While we wait on our beef to brown, or I guess our elk to brown, I'm going to get started on our enchilada sauce. So we're just going to put down some oil and then turn the heat on to medium. I'm gonna add in one jalapeno. I'm just using pre-chopped jalapenos from the garden that I've just had in the freezer. You want like one jalapeno worth. You might do a little more. Cool. That looks good. And then about a half a medium onion. Chopped, so. Perfect. And then we're just going to let this sit and kind of cook in the oil for about five minutes or until the jalapenos melt or become unfrozen and it becomes fragrant. Okay, these are starting to smell really good. The seeds in these jalapenos were dark. I know that probably looks like they're burned. That's just how they were before we ever cooked them. Then I just have, um, I just keep my peeled garlic in a jar. We're going to add about, look how big these cloves are. The equivalent to like four or five cloves of garlic in here. And we're just going to saute that for a minute or two. Remember garlic burns very quickly. All right. That smells great. It's been about two minutes. So I'm going to take this off and then we'll get this blended. All right. So to this now, we're just going to do about one cup of broth, chicken broth, vegetable broth, whatever you have on hand. You wanna add in cans of green chilies. Ideally, you want three or four. I only have two on hand. So we're making the best with what we have. When you live far from town, that's just kind of how it goes. You make work with what you have, which I actually think is great. It makes me more creative, and I think it makes me a better cook ultimately. Okay. Now let's grab the mixture we just made. Scoop that in. And then to this, I want one teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of pepper. We're just gonna eyeball it. And then the recipe calls for one and a half teaspoons of cumin. I feel like I am very sensitive to cumin. I don't love it. So I only do about a half a teaspoon. I think my dad's the same way. I just, I can taste cumin from a mile away. Then we're gonna just put this lid on. If you have a food processor or like a high speed blender, you're gonna wanna use that. This is all I have, so we're gonna make it work and blend. All right, and I just grabbed a clean spoon. And it's so important to try your things as you're going, cause then you can adjust now. Not such a pretty color. All right. We're just gonna try this. Oh, that is so good. I think it needs a little bit more pepper, a little bit more cumin, can't believe I'm actually saying that, and a little bit of lemon juice. Just as like a hint of brightness, I use this lemon juice always and forever because it has no preservatives in it. Okay, let's try just start with a little bit. We can always add more. Mix that again. Let me grab a clean spoon. Oh my gosh, that is so good. I really like it because I find that enchilada sauce, when you get it out of like the can, first of all, the ingredients are terrible. But secondly, it's not very spicy. I got the medium green chilies, so there's a little bit of a kick to this. Wow, phenomenal. We're going to set this aside. 
and I'm just gonna keep it in this container and then we will use it for assembly. Okay, I just pulled our dough out. It has risen for a second time. So we're gonna get these shaped. I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil down on this. I think it's like quartz or something. I don't know what it is to be honest with you. Just so it doesn't stick. You can also use flour. I just prefer using oil. Get it on my hands. And then we're gonna get this dough out. Can you see how holy and great this dough is looking now? So what I'm gonna do is form it into a ball and I'm gonna make these all into rolls. You can do whatever you want, but I'm gonna do rolls. So I just have this bench scrape. I'm gonna just cut this into even sizes so that we can make rolls. Remember, we're gonna rise these again. So you don't wanna go too big because they're gonna get larger. As close to the same size as possible. I actually prefer them to not be perfect because then if you're looking for just a little bit, you can grab a little roll. If you want more, grab a big roll. So now we need to shape them. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your, how do I explain this? Your pinky and your thumb, and you're gonna make a, like a C, and you're just going to roll it. Gosh, my cat is climbing my door. Back and forth between the two. So you're like pushing and then pulling back. And that's how you're gonna get a nice ball. And then you can just kind of pinch the bottoms together. And it'll look like that. You can see we're already getting some air bubbles in there. Perfect. And then we're just gonna set them on a piece of parchment paper. It just makes the job a lot easier. And then you wanna spread them out decently well just so that you don't get them all stuck together when they go to rise. All right, I'm gonna get the rest of these all shaped up and then we will put them back in the oven just to rise up one more time and then we'll start baking them. All right, our elk, ground elk is officially browned. So now we're going to get the sloppy joes finished up. Add in a little bit of oil, again, back to medium heat. And then I'm going to add some garden green peppers. These I just cut up last year. And because these are frozen, I'm just gonna let these defrost for a moment. Hey, these are looking nice. I'm gonna add in some onion. And then I'm gonna add in our ground meat. Start with that. And then to this, we're gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire. Ketchup, if you have homemade ketchup, that's definitely gonna be significantly better, but this is all we have, so this is what we're working with. I'm just gonna put a little bit of water in here and shake it out. Okay, we want about one and a half to two cups, so let me grab a little more. Okay, I'll try that much. All right, we've got that pretty well mixed in. Then we're gonna do one teaspoon of dry mustard. You just eyeball everything around here. And then we want some chili powder, about two teaspoons of that. Some cayenne, this is that cayenne that we grew in the garden together and processed together. That stuff is really hot, so we don't need to get crazy. Whew, I can smell the heat. Then we're going to add two tablespoons or so of tomato paste. Have your own, definitely ideal. And then a little bit of water. And then I like to just do a splash or so of white vinegar. I think it adds a nice zing, especially because Sloppy Joe's with like the ketchup and tomato paste can get a little sweet. 
I like to have a little sweet, a little spicy with the red pepper flakes, and then a little bit zingy with the vinegar. All right, that's looking good. Smells great. I'm gonna let this come up to heat, incorporate all together, and then we're gonna give it a taste test. All right, hot and bubbly. Mix. And then I grabbed a spoon. Let's give it a test. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. That is so good. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more mustard. Ooh, that is so good. I'm gonna add a little bit more hot pepper flakes. I just like to have a little bite. And then a tiny bit more salt, and I mean like a tiny bit. That's it. We've done it. I'm gonna give this a mix. Let it cook for a couple more minutes to just let the flavors all come together, and we've done it. Mm, that is so good. All right, next we're gonna get our enchilada filling ready. I'm basically gonna treat it like a taco. So, put a little more oil down, just because this meat is very low in fat. And then in this one, I'm just going to add taco seasoning. You can definitely make this at home. We've just had this for quite a long time, so I'm trying to use it up. About a packet worth. And water as well. And then, honestly, that's pretty much it for this one. Over here, we're going to add our marinara back in mix that around with the meat there go ahead and then a little while ago i cut up a bunch of mushrooms and i'm going to add a good handful of those in as well and sam and i both love mushrooms if mushrooms aren't your thing you can always lay them out or cut them into smaller pieces and then we're just going to let this come up to temperature let the mushrooms kind of break apart and then we're ready to assemble our first three recipes oh we almost forgot the most important part the rest of our onions i think i'm gonna put the rest in here i'm just gonna put the lid on this one all right, that looks perfect. This one's ready to go. I actually need this pan, so I'm gonna dump this all into a bowl. And then we will start heating up our tortillas in this pan or cooking them up. All right, finally for our enchiladas, we need to get the tortillas cooked. So I just use these. They're just raw tortillas. I know traditionally you would use a corn tortilla in enchiladas, but Honestly, favorite part about cooking is if there's something you don't love, you don't use it. So I don't love corn tortillas. I prefer these. So I'm just going to get these cooked up enough for about two dishes worth. And then we'll be ready to start assembling. These are super easy. All you do is just put them in a warm pan. Let them cook on each side for about a minute. They'll start puffing up and then you take them off. All right, and then there is our cute little tortilla. So I'm just going to get a bunch of these made up and then we'll start assembling. All right, we are gonna start assembling our lasagnas first. So these are literally the perfect size for just Sam and I because it gives us a little bit of leftovers but not too much and then it comes with these cool tops. Uh, these are Here's the size of them. And they are absolutely perfect for two people. So the trick to an easy lasagna is oven ready noodles. They literally make the job so simple. So all we're gonna do is we're just going to put a little bit of sauce down at the bottom of both of the pans. And then we're gonna put our noodles down. <laughs> that would just be too simple, wouldn't it? So we just need to break a little bit off of these. Uh, I might 
might be able to get three. Perfect. Then we're going to put our ricotta mixture right on top of the noodles. And then if you want, you can put some cheese on this layer. Since we already mixed cheese in with the ricotta, I'm going to call that good. And then we're going to add a good generous amount of sauce on top of that. Then we're going to do another layer of noodles and pasta. Okay, and then another layer of our ricotta. And then I'm just gonna take cheese. and just sprinkle a generous amount on top of both of these lasagnas. Perfect. And then I have a couple noodles left, so I'm gonna just move these out. I'm just gonna make another mini lasagna minus the meat sauce. I'm just gonna do a left, like regular marinara that we already have. That way we're not wasting any of the ingredients. So I'm gonna get that all made up and then we'll move on to, I think we'll do the enchiladas next. I'm gonna do this one just a little bit different just cause they get a little more complicated. So for, here's all of our tortillas and I just kept them together to keep them soft. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of sauce at the bottom. Perfect, and then in each tortilla, I'm gonna put some meat. And just a little bit of cheese. I'm gonna roll it. Not very well, and we're gonna stick it in there. If you wanted to bulk this up for a little bit cheaper, you could add rice to your enchiladas as well. I know that is a really nice way to just kind of bulk it up and keep things low cost with having to have less meat. So, and if you don't like meat, I know a lot of people tend to just do cheese enchiladas. So you would just do cheese inside each tortilla. You could also just do some black beans in there, really whatever you want. I think that would be really super delicious. So I'm just gonna make sure everything is all covered. And then we'll add a little cheese on top of them all. our finished enchiladas. I'm gonna go do one more bin. I think I have one. Yep, I have exactly five tortillas left, so I'm gonna get one more tray of enchiladas done. All right, friends, time to assemble our sloppy joes. Look at how great these rolls look. You can tell they're ready when they are pretty solid like that, and the bottoms are all done. I'm gonna get the other batch taken out and then we will get our sloppy joes assembled. All right, for our sloppy joes, literally couldn't be easier. We're just going to label our bags. So I just write what it is, the year or the rough date, and then I'm gonna use the one that's has the sharpie already dry. And then I know they make cool like bag holder things, but I don't have a ton of storage in our kitchen, so I find just a large glass honestly works really well and then I'm just going to divide this into thirds as evenly as I can okay so we got three bags in total of sloppy joes now we just have two more recipes to throw together really quickly and we're done for the day okay we are on our final stretch and these, I saved the easiest recipes for last. 
These will go really quickly. So I'm just dumping out, this is all, yeah, this is all elk. This is from Sam's um, first bull elk, so his Wyoming elk. And then we're gonna add in three eggs while my hands are already messy. All right, then I'm gonna go wash. All right, so we're gonna add in the rest of our onions that we cut up earlier today. And this is the reason we wanted them pretty small for this recipe. And then we're gonna add in a little bit of milk. This is just self-stable milk that we use. We don't go through a lot of milk. So I prefer using shelf-stable milk just so that when we need it, we have it. Obviously once it's open, this goes in the refrigerator. Then a little bit of olive oil. This is just to add some fat because wild game is so lean. Then we're gonna go in with a good amount of salt. Remember this is like six pounds of elk. And a good amount of pepper. Then I'm gonna add again some garden parsley. And then some oregano. This is Penzi's oregano. We don't have Penzi's in Wyoming, but where I used to live in Colorado, we did. So that's kind of how I got on the Penzi's bandwagon. And then this roasted garlic is so, mm, my gosh, it's so good. If you're gonna get one thing from Penzi's, my vote would be the roasted garlic. And then just some breadcrumbs. Okay, I'm gonna put on gloves because my hands are so dry from this winter. I don't know if you guys experience that too, but between the wind and the heaters and everything, I just get so dry. So my hands are really dry today. All right, that actually looks pretty dang good. So I did go ahead and spray this pan. And so we're gonna make two meatloafs for us. So I'm just going to take out probably like a pound, a little over a pound and put it in this pan. I do like to keep my meatloaf away from the sides of the pan because I feel like it helps crispen the edges and crispen everything. So I do try to keep my meatloaf shaped towards the inside of the pan. And then there's that. We are gonna put a topping on it. So let me get the other one made and then we'll get it topped. So all I use for this topping is just stone ground mustard and a little bit of salt. and honey. And then all we do is just mix that together. We're basically just making like a honey mustard drop topping. And it is so good. Okay, make sure you give it a little taste. Perfect. Adjust the honey and the mustard as needed. I am gonna use all of this on each, on the loaf, so I'm gonna double dip my spoon. But if you weren't gonna use it all, don't cross contaminate. And we do still eat this with, I know a lot of people eat their meatloaves with ketchup. When we go to actually eat it, we will put ketchup on, on the slice that we cut. Um, we just don't, I don't love, I don't know why. I don't love the like cooked, tomato pastiness on the outside of meatloaf. So that's pretty traditional. And then with these, we'll probably just use some of the garden potatoes and make some quick and yummy, oops, mashed potatoes. That's what it looks like. All right, now all we have left is to form our meatballs. I'm just using that same parchment paper and tray that we used for our rolls just because there was just bread on them. So I don't really feel like there's much of a need to get new parchment paper out. So I don't have one of those fancy scoopy things to keep everything the same size. So I just eyeball it and we are gonna cook these tonight and then I'm gonna flash freeze them and put them into a bag once they're all done. 
but that way I can basically um, pull out a couple for dinner or we really like to make like a barbecue meatball kind of thing when we're watching. I mean, we don't watch a lot, but the one time a year we'll watch a football game, <laughs> we like to have the some barbecue meatballs. It's kind of like a little snack appetizer. So we'll pull a couple out for that. We have those jalapeno poppers that we made in one of our last videos. So if we're just watching a football game or hanging out at home, we could just have barbecue meatballs and jalapeno poppers and done. We have like the world's easiest dinner. So we are just going to get these shaping and then I'm going to cook them tonight. And then all I'll have to do is just pull them out, put them in some sauce, defrost them. They're good to go. Here is a look at everything we accomplished. All right, so I just wanted to show you how I package up everything. So these lids come with it. So I just go ahead and pin them down. If you were going to eat these relatively soon, that's all you need to do. But since we are going for more long-term, I like to do a full wrap of Saran all the way around. And then we take a huge, this is from Costco, these are giant, thing of foil. And then I'm just gonna write on top of it, raw honey mustard meatloaf. So kitchen's clean, I just need to put some dishes away. I'm gonna get these all wrapped up and we are going to end the video here. Thank you guys so much for joining me today in the kitchen. I hope you had a great time. I really appreciate you taking your time to come hang out with me and if you haven't already, please make sure you hit subscribe and we will catch you in the next one. Bye, friend.